It was June of 2019 when a young woman vanished after getting off a flight from Los Angeles, California to Salt Lake City, Utah. Investigation would uncover that she had ordered a lift from the airport, but it didn't take her back home. Instead, she was driven to a local park in the dead of the night. Yeah, I'd like to get, if, if possible, have a wellness check done on my daughter. And I've been trying to get a hold of her, and her phone just tends to go to voicemail. I was just wondering if I could have somebody maybe go by her house and check on her. Mackenzie Lueck was a 23-year-old woman originally from El Segundo, California. She had moved from California to Salt Lake City in Utah, where she was studying kinesiology and pre-nursing at the University of Utah. Mackenzie had been studying since 2014. She lived in an apartment near Trolley Square, and she was also a member of the Alpha Child Mega Sorority. Mackenzie loves to travel, having recently just traveled alone throughout Europe. She had ambitions to attend nursing school or medical school. She was looking forward to starting a career that was standard on helping other people. Mackenzie's family, including her parents, Greg and Diana, still lived in California, mostly in the Los Angeles area. She had been raised in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and she had one older brother and two younger brothers. Mackenzie was also really sporty. She played water polo at high school, and she was on the swim team. In the middle of June 2019, Mackenzie flew from Salt Lake City to Los Angeles in California to attend her grandmother's funeral. It was Thursday, June 20, 2019, when Mackenzie's parents reported her missing to Salt Lake City police. Yeah, I'd like to get, if, if possible, have a wellness check done on my daughter. And I've been trying to get a hold of her, and her phone just tends to go to voicemail. I was just wondering if I could have somebody maybe go by her house and check on her. They informed police that the last time they had spoken to Mackenzie was on Monday. She texted them at around 2 a.m. from the Salt Lake City International Airport, informing them that she had arrived to see if she was well from California. Since then, her cell phone had been switched off. The last time that it was used was around 3 a.m. that morning. The first point of action for the police was to get in contact with Mackenzie's friends to try and retrace her last known movements. Her friend informed them that she hadn't arrived to work as a lab associate at PRA Health Services in Mill Creek, and she hadn't shown up to their classes at the University of Utah. Mackenzie's friends had gone to her apartment but they found that she wasn't there. Her car was still at the apartment, but her luggage was nowhere to be seen. They also spoke with their neighbors and asked them to keep an eye out for her. In a bid to generate some interest, her friends printed out missing person flyers and distributed them throughout the area. The missing person flyers describe Mackenzie as standing at 5 feet 6 inches tall and weighing around 120 pounds. Mackenzie did live away from her parents, but she was in constant contact via text messages and phone calls. They always texted throughout the day. Her friend commented that not answering your phone is very, very unusual. Even if you're missing or you want to disappear, you have to turn your phone on for GPS. Mackenzie's loved ones would utilize social media setting up a Facebook page called Find Mackenzie Look. In a statement, her family said, our primary goal is to find Mackenzie and bring her home. Her family is grateful for the concern, prayers, and tireless efforts of the Salt Lake City police and members of the community. According to the family of Mackenzie, they believe that after leaving the airport at Salt Lake City, she ordered a Lyft driver from her mobile phone. The Lyft driver would release a statement that read, We recognize how scary this must be for those who know and love. Mackenzie Lueck. The safety of our community is fundamental to Lyft Driver, and we are actively assisting law enforcement with their investigation. They also confirmed that Mackenzie certainly had ordered a Lyft Driver and revealed that her road contained no irregularities and ended at the destination that Mackenzie had put in. The driver then continued picking up customers after her ride ended. Mackenzie was very dedicated to her studies. She'd also left behind her card. Nevertheless, police hadn't released anything to indicate that they believed that Mackenzie was in danger. They referred to her as a missing person, and there was really no formal search party with Salt Lake City. 
The Lyft driver said that the person Mackenzie was meeting someone at Hatch Park, a park in a Salt Lake City suburb around 20 minutes away from her apartment. When Mackenzie got out of his vehicle, she didn't appear to be distressed. Mackenzie then climbed into another person's car, which was at around 3 hours a.m. It just, it's something I just I marked it as odd, but didn't really think of it um, that much until the police contacted me. When I got there, it didn't seem to be off or anything. And she actually mentioned, said, boy, this, you know, because um, the conversation, something was like, well, that's strange. But she said, not as strange as where you're dropping me off, is, you know, in the middle of a park. So she actually brought that up and said that it was odd that um, she was being dropped off there. So dropped off people in stranger places, I mean, around town. So it's, it just, it's something I just, I marked it as odd, but didn't really think of it um, that much until the police contacted me. In the morning, police announced that they'd searched the park and the surrounding area several times, and they'd reviewed surveillance footage from the area. Unfortunately, at the time, the park had dummy cameras. Police additionally said that they had no reason to continue with the Lyft driver's story. Police released some photographs of Mackenzie from inside the airport, hoping it could refresh someone's mind. She was wearing black sweatpants and a light-colored sweater. She was carrying a small black backpack, a large blue purse, and a bronze suitcase. They also issued a public appeal to the person who met Mackenzie at the park, steering we've exhausted all avenues of determining that information and want to ask this person to please call us while it is known. Mackenzie had met someone at the park police still didn't even know the person. When it was reported in the media that Mackenzie had been dropped off at a park in the early morning hours. Some people took to social media and essentially blamed Mackenzie for her own disappearance. Some people suggested that she was irresponsible for going to a park late at night. After the first week passed with no information, police obtained a search warrant for Mackenzie's cell phone records. Surveillance footage of the airport had captured Mackenzie texting with somebody. As she was leaving the airport, and there's speculation that this person could have been the person she met at the park. As the search for Mackenzie was underway, her friends put out a public plea for information and asked others in the area to join in. By this point, a tip line had been implemented, and around 200 tips had come in. Each tip was being thoroughly investigated. She was on a dating website very specific called Seeking Arrangements. If you want to upgrade your relationship from whatever piece of relationship you're in right now with some loser to some rich old guy that will mentor, pamper, and also have three other sugar babies. Her profile on that site was then quickly found, it seems from her Facebook posts, that this was something she was more than familiar with. When they got a hold of Mackenzie's phone records, it showed that she had been in contact with a fella named Ayula Ajayi. His phone was also in the park that night within one minute of Mackenzie's phone being there. After days of silence, a move on Mackenzie's Instagram account. This happened yesterday. It suddenly followed a page called Fatherless, and that is what led police to a home in Fair Park. The owner of that house now being called a person of interest. So the police then decided we should head on over to his house. Yeah, they didn't give me the search warrant. I authorized it before. Nice. And then when they said the search warrant, have the search warrant at hand. Can I borrow your phone then to call my lawyer? I'm going to give you her phone number right now. You remember her name? When we went to that control? Susanna. Yeah. Is there anyone else in there? Let's make sure. through my phone. We 
without the wire, they are going through my phone. You done with the phone? Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. You wanna? No garage, no house, no car. I'm not. I have no update. By the way, we both got our best. I look like what? Yeah, like the mailbox. I am USPS. I am USPS. Like we said, as soon as we know something, I'll tell you, though, okay? Better hope he's not the Postal Service. That means he's going to raise his rates every day and not be efficient. Exactly. Did you say you're going to which library? It's a library down this road. Oh, on the other side of the freeway. Yeah. West? Yeah. Okay. That's a new one, right? Yeah. It's very new. It has couch that I can just sleep. But I will be there, and I don't have a phone, but if you guys walk in, I will sit where you can see me. Okay. I will tell them, and maybe they'll send me to pick you up and see if you want to come back. Uh, the police officer picking me up there now. Get my nice red Camry. <laughs> <laughs> but if Fine. you pee in it, I'll take you to jail. Like we <laughs> but I have to pee. <laughs> 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 All right, AJ. Good luck, man. So, is that where you'll probably be? Yeah, unless you want me to stay, I'm happy to stay. No, it's, you, you're welcome to leave if you want to. I just, if we wanted to come talk to you, is that where you think you'll be? Yes. Okay. All right. Good luck, man. Thank you. Spend a couple hundred dollars on treats. What's going on, man? So, detectives are ready to talk to you about everything that's going on real fast. So. If you want to come, I'll give you right back to the house real quick. For this Fox News over there. I know. I'm going to drive you back in my car. It's a Camry, so. But we'll, stay, we'll stay away from the news. Yeah, we're not going to go by the news. We but I don't want my face on the news. I will do that so it does. Okay, so stand up real quick. Do it. We're just going to. Oh, get you up. Are you arresting me or something? No, no, no. Stand up. Then why are you? Okay. You're going to be detained for a you're, little bit. You're being detained. But just for a second, okay? i got to put you in handcuffs just while we're driving. Per no. policy, Her we're going to. just going to go talk to detectives for a little bit. Why is you detaining me? Because you need to talk to the detectives, and I need to transport you back. So my policy says every time someone's in my car, they will wear handcuffs. So that's why they're. But there's a news over there. They can come right back. They can come right back. We'll take you to another spot, so you're not by the news. Okay. We wish to know. How did the news find out? We were wondering the same thing. As the media was congregating around the home, some neighbors chatted with them. They said that Ajayi had turned part of the home into a randall. One neighbor said that Ajayi kept to himself. When he was outside, he almost always had earbuds in, and he very rarely spoke with anybody. Some neighbors reported that Ajayi had been burning something in his backyard. Shortly after Mackenzie vanished, when they looked out the window, they could see that he was pouring gasoline on a fire in his backyard. Some neighbors lamented that the smoke was coming into their windows. There was a strong stench from the smoke starting. It assaulted your nose. In fact, the neighbor came out and asked Ajayi what he was doing, and he claimed that he was burning pallets. At the time there had been a man staying at Ajayi's house, he told police that he woke up on June 17th to find Ajayi already awake. He was sitting on a trash can in front of his opened garage, and he asked the ranter if he knew how to get gas out of a vehicle. He told him he needed to burn some pallets and figure out how to get some gas. He then goes to a grocery store where he purchased a gas can and then filled it with gasoline. The renter said that when they returned home, he went and took a shower, and when he came out, Ajayi had started a fire in the backyard. Nevertheless, a couple of months beforehand, he had contacted a local contractor and asked them if they could build a small secret sign-proof room in the basement. He wanted there to be a thumbprint lock and hooks hanging on the wall which he had claimed were there for wine racks. A contractor from Ogden says he met with the suspect in Mackenzie Lewick's murder a couple of months ago. He says Ayula Ajay uh, wanted him to build a small, secret, soundproof room in the basement of his Fair Park house. Ajay told the contractor he had a girlfriend coming from out of town and that she was a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and didn't know that he drank alcohol, so he wanted to hide it. The contractor asked that if that were the case, why did the room need sign proofed? Ajayi replied that he may use the room to listen to music by himself. He said that his girlfriend was coming into town and needed to get it done before she got there because she was a Mormon girl. She didn't know he drank, so he wanted to hide her alcohol from her. And I was like, well, why do you need it to be soundproof? 
The contractor found the request so disturbing that he turned on the job offer. My nephew, when we got out to the truck, he was, we both looked at each other and was like, that was weird, right? And he was like, yeah, that was hella weird. We're not doing this job, right? And I was like, hell no. While Ajay wasn't aimed as a suspect, police would announce that he was a person of interest in Mackenzie's disappearance. Ajayi was a naturalized U.S. citizen born in Nigeria. He'd come to the United States on a student visa, but while here, he had married a woman named Tanisha Jenkins. Ajayi had attended Utah State University, where he studied computer science on and off for several years. But he didn't earn a degree. In 2012, he was banned from the campus after he was arrested on suspicion of stealing an iPad. While he had left the university, he still mailed around the campus, sleeping on sofas in resident halls and keeping his belongings in the janitor's closet. He also served in the Utah Army National Guard for six months, but he failed to complete basic training and was then discharged in June 2015. After failing to meet medical procedure standards, Ajayi even published a book called Forge Identity and he referred to himself as an entrepreneur on his author profile on Amazon. The book was a fictional book based on a young boy who had witnessed a gruesome murder. Back in December 2017, just two days after the search of Ajayi's home, police announced that they've arrested Ajayi on charges of aggravated murder, aggravated kidnapping, and obstruction of justice. When police searched his backyard after the comments from his neighbors, they found that there was a burned area as well as a fresh dig site. A forensic excavation was conducted and they found several charred items that were identified as belonging to Mackenzie. Even more horrific, they had found charred tissue and the examination of that charred tissue came back as a match to Mackenzie. They also find Mackenzie's burned phone and some more charred items were found in the Ajayi home, including black clothing and a possible purse strap or backpack strap in the home. They also find socks with blood stains near the washing machine and in a trash can in the bathroom. A gas can was also found in the trunk, and police were able to determine that this gas can had been purchased just hours after Mackenzie vanished. Chief Mike Braun would state that calling Mackenzie's parents Greg and Diana to inform them of the crushing update was one of the most difficult phone calls he had ever made during his career. Ajayi had become a suspect when police were able to access Mackenzie's cell phone. They identified him as the person that Mackenzie had been texting when she left the airport that night. What hampered the initial investigation was that it wasn't immediately known that Mackenzie had been using the Text Me application for cell phones. Both Mackenzie and Ajayi were active users on dating websites, including Tinder and Seeking Arrangements, which is a dating website to connect sugar daddies and sugar babies. It was on Seeking Arrangements that Mackenzie and Ajayi met the first time they spoke on the app. But they had never actually met up. They chatted back before deciding to meet up in the park that night. Cell phone data would also show that Mackenzie and Ajayi were both at Hatch Park that night which indicated that he was the person who picked her up. When police had identified Ajayi as the last person Mackenzie had been texting with, he came in for questioning and explained that he had PTSD and anxiety, which is why he'd used various steering websites to talk to women. He claimed that he never met up with any of the women, including Mackenzie. So she stopped responding once I sent out my pictures. I thought maybe she just doesn't want my type of race. So I just stopped responding to her. A week and a half now to prepare. And we have been very busy because I care about Mackenzie. I care. And I want her. I think you did care about her. I agree. And I, I know that there's more for you to tell me and you're holding back and I don't understand why. AJ, I just told you that your phone records and the location put you up at the meet. Do you think honestly and expect me to believe that you ended that conversation and somehow you and her and her location end up in the exact same spot? Oh, I'm not doubting you. If I see that too, if I'm in your case, I would be asking myself, what are you asking me right now? It's not a miraculous question. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Okay. Stuff doesn't just happen. No. 
Yes, I agree with you. I'm telling you to explain that. And so far, you have not. Well, how do I explain something I don't know? Are you saying you don't know or you don't remember? Because those are two different things, AJ. We didn't call you down here. You're not under arrest. You're not being detained. You can leave anytime you want to, okay? It just doesn't make sense. I just want to, I want to get to the root of it sure. too. Yeah. Because when you said my IP is showing, right. that means something is wrong. Okay, so are you, you're still willing to talk to us and show us this thing is right? right? Um, I only want to share two things with you. Okay. So, that is that seeking arrangement. So if you see, some of them are even in Seattle. And some of them, so it's like, even some of them are in Philippines. So I have PTSD and anxiety. I just need to talk to someone whenever I'm alone. And I'm he claimed that he had messaged Mackenzie back over the dating website, but claimed that she had blocked him, and then their communication ended. He even showed police a screenshot of their messages and said to them that Mackenzie had stopped replying to him because he sent her a picture of himself. See all this? These dates right here, mm -hmm. the 17th, all these dates and times, the 16th when I told you, and mm -hmm. when you told me it's 612, all these t messages are messaging her phone from your Wi-Fi, from your IP. Really? Mm-hmm. That's why we're coming to talk to you. We didn't just pick you out of the, from a phone book, you know? Yeah, I was, <laughs> that's why I was freaking out. I started logging into everything. It's like, I need to start gathering information. I even called my lawyer already. I'm like, I, I don't know what's going on. You said you're downloading. Yes, and I was between the, from the 17th between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. Yes, so and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you did this or you were involved in it at all. I'm just saying that someone at your house or someone was using your IP address. That's all. Yeah, I'm just trying to get the bottom of it. I would like to do that because yeah. I'm freaking out already. <laughs> I have anxiety and I have PTSD. So. That's why I've been calling you, like, please let me help if any way I can help. Even my lawyer don't want me to come. Ajayi fell under an even deeper cloud of suspicion when he claimed that he had no idea what Mackenzie even looked like, stating that he had never seen a photo or online profile of her. However, that would quickly be determined to be a lie as well when police found that he had several photographs of Mackenzie saved on his cell phone. And during the interrogation, Ajayi said that he suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder and glaucoma. He said that he was suffering from shortness of breath. Medical staff needed to come into the room and examine him. They find that he is hyperventilating, and Ajayi is eventually confronted about all of the evidence gathered against him. They continued to claim that he had never met up with Mackenzie and that he had been at home playing video games all night. So earlier you said we could have to take your phone and download it. Are, are you still willing to do that or no? I just need to call my lawyer and see this, okay? Because I want to help as much as I can. Sure. But she's saying that some police just want to pin it on someone that they can pin it on me. But I have actually, I have the hard drive in my car. I downloaded the old hard drive that have the old security camera. I even downloaded my own, the whole text and all my text messages from my phone provider, I was I brought everything with me. But on my way here, she was like, you are going to shoot yourself in the phone. I'm talking about, we take your phone, we hook it up to a machine, and we download the contents of your phone. Let me get uh, an approval from her first. Okay. You want to do because that now, or you want to do it tomorrow, give me a call? Or? I, wait. I walk tomorrow. I walk Sunday to, I walk Tuesday to what Saturday. What time do you work? I work from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So I can come by this time if okay. I if well, she had a problem. I'll be here all day. I get here at 6 a.m. So. so if you download a word on it, are you going to download it? Everything that's on your phone. So you're yeah, just going to the memorize the phone. Exactly. So you have access to the hub, the browsing history, everything. See. Yes. Okay. Cool. I'm okay with that. Okay. But I just need to approve her. That's fine. And Give me a call tomorrow morning when you wake up. Let me know fine. what they said. Okay. And and I'm willing, if you have anything that you need from me, I'm willing to give it to you. You um, know, it's, it's the only reason, you know, you can understand if this was your sister or something, or your mom, we'd be working just as hard to, to find her for you, okay? This family is in, the same, in, in, in that same boat. We just want to do everything we can. And just because you've chatted with her, you've texted back and forth twice or however many times, and it's 
bouncing off your IP address. You know, we just want to cross every every avenue and make sure that people are invited, people who are staying with you, people might be parked outside of your house using your Wi-Fi. We just want to make sure. Okay. Okay, so again, talk to your attorney. You got my number. Give me a call in the morning. And another thing is that when people come to my house, my phone is not locked. After Ajayi was arrested, he was ordered to be held without following his arrest. Mackenzie's family would provide a statement in the wake of the grim news during which they thanked police for their work at random parts. The Lewick family would like to express their gratitude for the effort put forth by the Salt Lake City Police Department and partnering agencies who assisted, as well as all of the people who provided tips. A makeshift memorial would also appear outside of Ajayi's home, where Mackenzie's remains have been found in the backyard. More of Mackenzie's body would be found while charred human tissue was found in Ajayi's backyard. It was only that, if the rest of Mackenzie's body wasn't there, her remains were found buried in Logan Canyon, which is around 85 miles away from Ajayi's home. It's located near the Utah State University, presumably an area that Ajayi knew well. She was found with her arms bonded with zip ties and ropes. District Attorney Sam Gill updated the public on the gruesome update as it transpired Ajayi's cell phone data and placed him in the canyon around a week after Mackenzie disappeared. Police embarked on the scene and tracked them into the canyon during their search. They came across a disturbed area of soil underneath a grove of trees. It was here that they honored Mackenzie's body. Ajayi appeared in court via video link for the first time on July 14th. The courtroom was parked with Mackenzie's loved ones, and Ajayi didn't say anything during the hearing. Meanwhile, police were continuing their investigation into Mackenzie's murder. They were at Jordan River Parkway, just 15 minutes away from the courtroom, where they were searching for evidence related to the case in the river. They found Mackenzie's University of Utah student ID card and multiple items of women's clothing. Ajayi was formally charged with Mackenzie's murder as well as aggravated kidnapping and obstruction of justice.